Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be making a tier list for all of the different classes in Dungeon Born. Now, I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to kind of make a tier list mainly focusing on for solos, but I will talk maybe a little bit about how they would do in teams as well. But this is basically going to be a solo tier list. Um, and also, I guess it would be fairly relevant for if you're going in with a team, but maybe you're not using voice chat or anything like that. So for teams, but you're kind of like an independent player as well. So we're going to just do this in order. So it's from left to right, just how you'll see it in game. And we're going to start off with the fighter. And I am going to put this probably in B tier. Um, and this is just like a pretty decent starting point honestly um because you know s would obviously be insane a would be very good c is not very good and d is probably uh quite bad but b is like just a solid pick that's how i would see this so i think the fighter is going to be a solid pick because they can just be blocked so their q ability which makes them spin round in circles lots and lots of times is very solid if the enemy either can't get away or doesn't really know what they're doing because you can just block this, and if you block this, then it's really not going to do a whole lot of damage to you at all, especially if you've got like a shield instead of just a normal weapon. And then your other option is, depending on what class you are, you can just knock the fighter back, or you can just run away and actually outrun the spinny spin. So, it's, it's not fantastic, but a lot of the time, because it's like a pretty new game still and maybe people coming into the beta haven't played it before so they're not super familiar with anything a lot of the time you could use this ability and just get a free kill on someone because they won't know that they can just block it so that does happen sometimes but it it is not going to be a fantastic ability once you are aware you can block it and also you can just avoid it as well their e ability which kind of dashes them towards an enemy um is also solid obviously it's quite good to pair the q and the e abilities together but it's like not fantastic or something the health is nice the damage is nice starting off with the two-handed sword is very nice as well and being able to use crossbows is cool and having decent armor is cool um but it's for now i'm going to leave it in b this might change but for now i'm going to leave it in b and by the way let's say i have three classes in one thing like this uh, whatever is on the left is going to be the best in the class just to say that as well so then i'm going to go for the priest and as a solo if you're a solo player i think i'm going to put this into c i think the priest is going to go into c yeah and the reason for that is because they really just don't have much damage potential at all Obviously, if they were in a team, they would be much more useful. But one of their abilities heals you and damages enemies, and the other ability makes them immune to damage for three seconds. Now, both of these are very, very good if you're in a team. But as a solo, you would just get a lot more out of pretty much any of the other, like, kind of casting classes. So the Pyromancer, the Cryomancer, and the Druid, they'd all be able to do a lot more in most situations and against the AI as well. Like, just fighting NPCs and AI and all that kind of stuff, the Pyromancer, the Quirimancer, and the Druid would just be able to take those out much faster as well. So while the Priest would probably be like an A and be like quite needed, I would say, in team games as a solo, it's really not going to be fantastic. And if you're not really communicating with your teammates, it's going to be very, very hard to kind of time your immunity ability to when they're going to push enemies and stuff like that. So for that reason, I am going to put them into C. But if you like them, you can still play them. It's not like they're absolutely awful or anything. They're just not going to be so useful in solos just because they are kind of more of a team-based class. So then we're going to go to the rogue. And this is probably going to go into A tier. I think the recent health buff that they got was pretty big as well. So I think the rogue is going to go into A tier. So if you're playing solo and you don't really want to fight an enemy, you could use your Q ability to freeze someone and then just run away. And like, you can get very, very far ahead because you've also obviously got fast movement speed, or you can just go invisible and kind of wait around the area for the enemies to, I don't know, start opening a chest or something and then surprise attack them. Uh, against the AI, the row could be very, very good. You actually deal loads of damage if you like backstab enemies. So it's good for clearing AI. It's fairly fast at clearing rooms and stuff, 
by themselves, and so is the fighter, actually. I didn't mention that before. But they're squishy, right? They're very squishy, so you have to be fairly good, and you kind of have to know what you're doing to be able to play the rogue efficiently, especially when it comes to PvP. If you don't know what you're doing, and if you don't know all of the AI's moves and attacks and everything like that, you're probably just going to die. I think you're probably going to struggle to kill bosses with this as well, unless you've got a crossbow or something on you. So do just be aware of that. If you're playing in teams, the rogue can also be super useful in teams. You will want to have a fairly coordinated group, though, while you're using them, because what you're going to want to do is go and free someone on the enemy team, and then no one on your team hit them, so they're frozen for like a fairly long time. And then you want to like 3v2 the other two opponents on the enemy team with your teammates. And then once you've killed those, you want to go and finish the last one off. So that's how you'd want to play this in a team situation. Um, but that would be fairly hard to do. But they are like a very, very solid class. The extra movement speed and the extra interact speed is very, very nice. You can also... Um, you do also have a little bit of extra inventory space because you are a human as well, which is always just very solid. Um, so then we're going to come to the Pyromancer. And as a solo, I think I'm going to put this into A, I think. Yeah, the Pyromancer is going to go into A because they're very, very easy to use. Uh, if someone's close to you and you don't want them to be close to you, you press E and then they get knocked back. If someone's far away, you're probably just going to use your fireball. Now, spellcasters are a little bit harder to use. Um, well, they're not harder to use. They're just a lot slower, right? If you only eliminate people with your staff or eliminate AI NPCs with your staff, it's going to be very slow. And how quickly you like clear a room is going to be much, much slower than it would be if you were like a fighter or a rogue. But it's also obviously safer to be far away than it is to be up close, especially if you don't really know any of the AI's attack patterns and stuff. And also their searing staff can be very, very good. If you catch like a real player out in the open, you can get a good few shots off with that and then maybe fireball them and they will probably just die. So the searing staff and the fireballs are very, very good if someone is out in the open. And in teams, the fireball, when it's charged, is super powerful because it's got a very decent AoE. So if there's a full team through one door, all standing in one corridor, you can get like a solid 200 damage to all of them if you hit the fireball on all of them, which is fairly easy to do because the AoE is pretty big. So even though they're a spellcaster and they're going to be a little bit slower at killing enemies for the most part than other classes, they are definitely pretty safe. If someone's up close to you, use your E to try and get away, then maybe charge up a fireball if you can. And if someone's far away, you can probably just fireball them. If you're playing in teams, you are going to want to kind of be back behind your teammates and all that kind of stuff. Let them fight in front. Maybe if you've got a fighter or something up in front, and then you stand back and like cast spells at the enemies. That's how you're going to want to play them in teams. But they are definitely decent, but just do be aware of the fact that they can take a little bit more time to clear out areas than any of the kind of up close and personal classes. So then we have the Death Knight. And I think... I'm going... It's solos. So where am I going to put this? I think I'm going to put it into... I'm going to put it far right A. The Death Knight is very okay. Their um, ability that makes their AoE happen around them is very, very solid. It slows enemies, which can be super annoying and just allow you to kind of go to town on them with your sword and stuff like that. But the problem is, if someone is far away from you, your grab does not have much range at all. And the grab is also going to be much more useful in team situations, I find, than as a solo. Like, yes, let's say you, you get a rogue low, um, and then they start running away, and they get away because they're faster than you. Like, yes, you can pull them towards you and do some damage to them like that, and then maybe get a pick. But the grab's going to be so much more useful when there's, like, a different team at the end of a corridor through a door, and maybe one of your teammates starts closing the door, you pull an enemy towards you through the door, the door gets closed so the enemy can't get back, and then it's like a 3v1 in that little area, and the two teammates are behind the door. That's going to be like the best use case scenario for the Death Knight's grab. But it can be useful in solos as well. Regenerating your kind of um, like mana, I don't know, shadow energies type stuff, that's probably what it is, is done by just eliminating enemies and then like taking their souls, which just drops whenever they're killed. So it's nice not having to worry about mana or anything like that. 
Both of your cooldowns are pretty long, however, so you just do have to watch out for that. One thing I actually forgot to m mention about the Pyromancer is that the Fireballs, if you don't charge it, well actually even if you do charge it, has a really, really, really fast cooldown. So if you've got full mana, you can just spam Fireballs at the enemies really, really quickly because it doesn't have a cooldown. So that's one very, very good thing about the Pyromancer. I'm actually going to put the Death Knight into B. And I think that's going to be because the rogue is going to have like a pretty high skill ceiling. So if you're very good, they're going to be A tier. If you're not that good, it would probably go a little bit lower. So I'm going to leave the rogue up there um, because that's going to be, if you're like really, really good, they're probably going to be very solid. And I'm going to leave the pyromancer up here kind of for the opposite reason, which is because they're very, very easy to use. You just kind of stay far away and shoot your searing stuff at the enemies and just kind of wait for everything to die. The Death Knight's going into B because you you do have to be close to your enemies. Uh, even if you have a crossbow, you're going to have like a pretty slow movement speed, meaning you're not really going to be able to catch up to a rogue. And even if you try and grab them, if they're even like a little bit far away, your grab isn't going to reach and then you're not going to be able to get that pick. But they are still a very solid class. And again, the rogue is going to be much harder to use. So, you know, if you're at the same level as like a, a different kind of casual player, the rogue would probably be here, and then you'd probably, like, win that fight. So then we have the Cryomancer. And I think I'm also going to put this into A. Am I going to put this into A? I think I am. I think they're fairly easy to use, as well as the Pyromancer. It is also nice just being able to, like, immediately heal yourself with your E ability. And Q makes, like, an ice storm happen, which you can, like, kind of continuously, continuously aim until it activates. So they're going to be like very similar to the Pyromancer because they can also use staffs and orbs. But I would say they're going to be a little bit more defensive, whereas the Pyromancer is probably more for attack. So Pyromancer is pretty attack focused um, and the Cryomancer I'd say is, would be pretty defense focused. You can use it as attack as well, but one of your abilities is just to heal yourself, which is obviously very defensive. And the other one can definitely be used to kind of put the Ice Storm in between you and your opponent so that you have a little bit of a head start, kind of get away while they're going through the ice storm and kind of being slowed by it. You can probably get away, open a door and maybe close it as well and just get away from the whole fight. So they're going to be very, very good for kind of disengaging if they need to. Or let's say you just 1v1 someone with just swords going everywhere and they get low and you get low. What you can do is enter your ice, wait for the enemy to start using a bandage or a healing potion and then come out of the ice. You would have got a little bit of health regen already. And then before their healing potion is actually activated, you can try and take him out. That would be a pretty simple tactic to try and execute as well. And then we come to the Swordmaster. Now, I think... I'm not going to put them into S. I'm going to put them first in A. I'm going to put Swordmaster first in A because they are very, very good. If you have swords, which are pretty easy to obtain because they're super cheap to buy, like, the grey ones from the merchant, I think it's 25 gold. So it's very, very cheap to, like, bring lots of ammunition in for yourself. And if you do that, it's going to be really hard for an enemy to kill you because let's say it's a pyromancer and they stay far away trying to hurl fireballs at you. You can also stay far away and hurl swords at them. So what I like to do as a swordmaster is to start off with four swords and fire them at someone and kind of keep running towards them. And then at that point, if I get up close to them, I use my E ability to make the sword go around me, which does a bunch of damage if the enemy stays there. And then if the enemy comes close to me, that's going to basically just mess them up and they'll be low from the four swords already. So I'll probably just get a kill. If they keep running away, I can just chase them because my movement speed is, is decent, right, as a sword master. So if they try running away, I can keep chasing, wait for the cooldown for my four swords to, well, cool down and then shoot that at them again, and then maybe try and finish them off with a crossbow. So you can definitely kill people from far range with this. It's like excellent for starting off a fight with the swords. And then when you push up close because they're low, using the E ability to make the sword go round and round in a circle, it's very, very powerful. You basically just have very high potential from far away and from up close, which just makes it... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put this at S here. Which just makes it an absolute nightmare to fight. Like, with the fighter or the death knight, they have very minimal range. Like, the fighter is definitely, like, melee-only focused, 
Um, they have a little dash to kind of go into in front of them a little bit, but it doesn't really go that far. Then the Death Knight also has the grab, but that range is not a lot either. So they're both very, very limited by their range. For the rogue, the range doesn't the range rather doesn't really matter because they're very, very fast. And then the Cryomancer and the Pyromancer obviously do have range. The priest is down in C because mainly heals. But the Swordmaster can do range stuff and close range stuff and they do also have access to a two-handed sword which is very very good for just staggering normal enemies as well and makes room clearing a lot faster i find so i think they're just very 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 solid again if you're like a really good rogue or a really good druid um which we'll get to in a second then you know you could definitely give a sword master a run for their money but i think because everyone's new this is going to be a kind of tier list for just like the average kind of player um, and therefore, I think the Swordmaster is going to be S tier. And the fact that you regenerate health when your swords hit as well are insane. So let's say someone kind of catches you off guard up close to you and you didn't see them. You can use your E ability to make the sword go round in a circle. And then if they try going away, or even if they don't, even if they're just still up close to you, you can start using your Q ability. And let's say you're maybe like half health because they've started off the fight and you weren't expecting them there. So they got you low and you haven't done much damage to them. You can do a lot of damage to them with your four swords, and that also regenerates your health. And that, that kind of resets the fight because you're both still going to be a little bit low, and then you're still going to have your spinny spinny E ability going around in circles. They're very, very good at kind of like bringing the fight back into their favor as well if someone catches you off guard. So all around, just a very, very good class in like any given situation, which is obviously extremely valuable. And then we have the Druid. I think I'm also going to put this into S. Am I going to put... Oh yeah, I'm going to put this into S as well. Because like the Swordmaster, they're going to be very, very good in any given situation. Let's say someone's low and you need to push them. Enter your Panther form. Go give them a pounce and they're probably just going to die. You can summon your Ent if you want first to try and get them lower. Or try and like make them go into a certain direction. Um, and then go into your Panther form, chase them down and finish them off. So they they don't have range, but they can push people extremely quickly. Actually, you know what? They do have range with their staff. So they have range because they can spell cast. And then also, if they need to push, they can push extremely quickly. And then if someone's up close to you, you can summon an Ent to kind of make them go away from whatever area you're in. And if they just push through the Ent or destroy the Ent, it's actually not called an Ent, it's called a Trent. If they push through that and you're maybe low, you can just enter Panther form and pounce away. And you're going to be able to do that like continuously if you've got enough energy. And you're just going to be able to like soar across the map really, really quickly. So absolutely fantastic for disengaging fights. And also very, very good for just kind of um, doing damage from far away and then being able to push enemies with that as well. So again, they've got capabilities up close and they can do stuff from far away as well. Pretty high skill ceiling requirement though, again, um, like in Panther form, you don't want to just be 1v1ing the enemy if they're not low, because you will just lose that. You don't have much health. You do also have to be pretty good at maintaining your energy and knowing when you need to disengage the fights and all of that kind of stuff. So I'd say the best way to use the Druid would be to try and get a little bit of damage from far away, try and deny a certain area with the Ent, the Trent rather, and then maybe go into panther form, give him a pounce, and then depending on how low you think they are, you can probably just try and finish them off in panther form. So yeah, there I think is my tier list. I think I'm happy with that. Um, you've probably noticed this already, but this is basically going to be for how useful the class can be in any given situation. Like Druid and the Swordmaster, they're both going to be super useful in any given situation, along with the Rogue, the Pyromancer, and the Cryomancer. The Death Knight and the Fighter are kind of limited by their range, and the, the Priest does have range, but they are very focused on healing, and instead of using mana to do that, you can just drink a health potion and use a bandage instead. If you don't agree with this tier list, that is okay. It's not like I've got hundreds of hours in the game. I still am relatively new to it, but I feel like I've got a pretty good understanding of most of the classes so far. So this is what I would call a very early tier list of how I'm finding each of the classes as a solo. I will also say that you can definitely do just fine with any of the classes. I don't think any of them are like severely underpowered or something. I feel like they all definitely have their 
stronger suits. So let's say you really like the priest, just play the priest. It's not like they suck. They're very, very solid. Uh, the immunity is really, really nice for fighting an enemy. You've got three seconds where you can just whack them with your mace and they can't do any damage to you. One of their perks gives you two uses of the immunity, which is super powerful. And in teams, they can resurrect teammates. So, you know, like they all of the classes here, I feel like they're very, very well balanced. So I would definitely say this is like a very kind of tight tier list because the whole point of the game and the whole point of the class system is that classes have their strong suits and their weaknesses. Uh, so like the fighter and the death knight, obviously they're strong up close, but they're weak from far away. But that's why I've put them into B, right? So I would say this is like a pretty tight tier list. I'd say all of these, these classes are fairly close together, um, but this is just how I would arrange them. So yeah, there you go. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it for this video. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell.